Hit that some son of a bitch and awesome theme music. It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's a new episode of the greatest movie review podcast in the entire world. Movies that don't suck and some to do. My name is Neil. And I'm the great Chris. Yeah, you. <laughs> Today, we are bringing you two, kind of not one, not two, but two. Yeah, just two. <laughs> <laughs> just two. <laughs> two. Of the movies that are out there for your viewing pleasure in the world today. First, we are going to be talking about Netflix's new film. That is um, a movie, yeah, and, <laughs> based on a Nora Roberts yeah. uh, book called *Raisin*, featuring uh, the great Alyssa Milano. God, that was great. I want to kill somebody else. Who can I kill? Chris, find me another demon to kill. Okay, we got to get these powers out of her. What? You're the one who wanted me to have a power. Remember? That's from Charmed, right? Yes, that is from okay, Charmed. Okay, right. and, and then uh, Sam Page. I'm sorry I didn't mention my involvement with Ridley when I first saw you at the bookshop. Thank you. But in my defense, I didn't know it was your bookshop until just then. But you knew it was true love and you know how much that place means to me. Well, yeah, but not for a long time. What's that from? That is from a movie he did uh, on the Hallmark. Oh, uh, I mean, that makes sense. Um, that totally makes he sense. does a lot of movies on the Hallmark channel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and I didn't have anybody else for that movie. I, I, I well, you have um, Allison Aria. Oh, yeah. Yes. Allison Aria. Yes. No, I just said it was nice, goddammit. And we also seem to have a lot in common. Like what? Uh, we both love Cinderella. <laughs> Seven years. Not once have you mentioned Cinderella. What? I talk about Cinderella at least once a week, Evan. You just never fucking hear me because you're always going on about Coldplay and fuss with the fucking people. Oh, you're going to put down my musical taste now? How fucking low are you? Pump up kicks, Evan. Do you know what that song is about? Murder! You are a murderer. You are murdering my spirit. I've yet to see Peacemaker, and I have to. I have to. Now, right? Yeah, now, yeah, now yeah. you have to, right? Yeah, right, right. Uh, I, I didn't realize that's who that was when I saw the movie oh, yeah. uh, that we watched. Yeah. And then I was looking for clips. I couldn't really You're find like, Holy fuck, right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I put her name in, and like all of a sudden Peacemaker came up. And not only did I watch that clip, as soon as I got done with the clips, I went and rewatched the entire episode. <laughs> like, I've already watched the episodes. There's four episodes. I haven't watched today's episode that was released. But I've watched the first three episodes twice. Have you, have you watched uh, Have you watched um, Archive, Archive 81 yet? No, not yet. And what's the first uh, episode? We, we, like, a couple of you we got, we, got, we, got a, we got a list. Dude, there's so and, many. So many. I, we, I still, I, we're still got to fill it, finish up Yellow Jackets, mm -hmm. uh, which that's a really good show, and we just got stuck at a midpoint because of something of, of something else popped in, and of course we're watching Peacemaker. Uh, I haven't even watched yesterday's episode of Bubba Fett yet, mm. and so it's like I'm stuck. I'm behind on Bubba Fett. I'm behind on Yellow Jackets. Uh, Peacemaker is another one I got to watch, and then on top of it. This weekend's the Royal Rumble, so it's just like yeah, and there's so much wrestling going on, and uh, so many crazy things going on. All right, then next movie that we are watching is the one that got that has a lot of award buzz mm -hmm. going on, and so we finally went back and uh, we had to pop it in here, and that is called Being the Ricardos, uh, featuring the one, the only. She's so lovely that she is even better than Tom Cruise. She had to kick him to the curb, mm -hmm. Mrs. Nicole Kidman. You know what I wish? I wish you would stop comparing Danny to Arthur. Danny was a four-year-old boy who chased his dog into the street, and Arthur was a 30-year-old heroin addict who OD'd. Frankly, I resent how you keep lumping them together, Mom. Yeah, that's from a yeah. rabbit hole. I don't. Yeah, the rabbit hole. That's one fucking... for le lesser known movies, but I really think more people should go watch it just That's, to appreciate it's, it's, it's Nicole Kidman's acting. It's a trip. Acting. It's a trip. It's a good movie. Um, also, the wonderful, the beautiful, always amazing actor Javar Bardem. Have you ever? Have you ever done? 
Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Harvey R. Bard. I say Javar. Yeah. I, I knew I was going to do that. Harvey R. Bard. Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem. Regrets is unprofessional. They kept me for five months in a room with no air. They poached on me. And I protected your secrets. I protected you. But they made me suffer and suffer and suffer. And then I realized it was you who betrayed me. Um, from Skyfall? Skyfall. And I, by any means, I looked through all the movies. Dude, there could have been so many you could have chosen. Yeah, yeah I know, but... The thing is, he, he doesn't out. have big speeches or monologues in any of them. Yeah, I mean, he has some, like, good, he has some stuff in No Control of Men, but again, it's with no, dialogue. No, 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 he things. doesn't. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue. Yeah, yeah. He just has a lot of good acting and movements Menace. and, reac- <laughs> yeah, and yeah. reactions yeah. to people. Believe me, I pretty much watched the entire No Country for Old yeah, Men yeah. trying to look yeah. for clips for so him. Good. So believe me, I tried. All right, and also the great, the admirable... The guy has won more, or should win more awards because I swear he, he just is a chameleon in the acting world. The one, the only, J.K. Simmons. Are you one of those single tier people? Do I look like a double fucking rainbow to you? You must be upset. Are you upset? No. No, so you just don't give a shit about any of this? I do give so a shit about this. Are you upset? Yes or fucking no? Yes, you are upset. Yeah. Say it. I'm upset. Say it so the whole band can hear you. I'm upset. Louder! I'm upset. Louder! I'm upset! There's so many things you could have chosen for that movie. I mean, like, like, I mean... I was trying not to have it too vulgar. <laughs> I was trying not to have certain like words. Like slurs, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even that scene, I cut it right in between <laughs> him saying some very... Catchy words that you might not yeah. be able to say with the, without it being in content. Yeah. And uh, I believe I also got, yeah. did I get a Nina, Nina Ar- Arianda? Yes. Yes. Nina Ar- I am grateful that you were willing to buy me the heart of the ocean, but a gift like that, that's too much. Even if I am the one who asked for it. I saw the dynamic change. The friction that it already had created between us, so I let you off the hook. That's from Billion, so it's actually uh, in Brazen. The actor uh, Malachi Weir uh, is actually in the same oh, show. Mal- Malachi has both of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I could not find a clip for him, but uh, Nina uh, is not. And also in this movie, Tony Hale, Olivia uh, Shock Watts in it, dude. Um, Clark Clark Gregg. I mean. Yeah, it's such a great uh, oh, being yeah. the Ricardos. Uh, directed and written by the fucking great Aaron Sorkin. Oh, yeah, we will talk <laughs> all about that later. Chris, tell them where they can find us. You can find us online at MoviesUnsuck.net. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MoviesUnsuck Podcast. We're on Twitter at NGS Podcast. We're on Instagram at NGS Podcast. And uh, if, if you guys want to buy shirts and shit, go, far, go to bonfire.com slash MoviesUnsuck. If you want to throw us a few shekels, maybe get some extra content or an exclusive t shirt and stickers, uh, go to. Uh, Patreon.com slash movies don't suck. And uh, we're all streaming platforms, whether it be Apple Music or Deezer. Or I guess we're on Tidal. I think we're on Spotify still. And all that other stuff. So All that other stuff. Mm-hmm. All that other stuff. Everywhere you find podcasts, uh, you can find movies don't suck something to do. All right. The place I'm going to talk about this week for our lovely small business um, is... Wrestling for a Cause. Now, Wrestling for a Cause is a wrestling federation that every time they wrestle, the money goes to the proceeds go to people that are in need. The show I went to this past Saturday, which me, my wife, and some friends went to, was for a little girl named Isabella who has leukemia, and the money, the proceeds all went to her and her family in this time of need as she's uh, suffering at St. Jude's Hospital. Now, they are going to be having a new show coming up February 26th, uh, right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Hope Center Arena, 1821 East 66th Street North. 
Wrestlers like Silas Young, the WFC Tag Team Champions Johnny Lightning and Johnny Dynamite, Duke Cornell, and Luke Langley will be performing there. Um, if you look up, you can look up their information at uh, – at Wrestling for a Cause on Facebook, or you can go to WFCshop.org. Also, if you want to make a donation just for the good cause that's they're putting it on for their performance on for that that month, you can go to donate at WFCcharity.com. I like that, dude. Thanks. Oh, man, it was cool. It was a great wrestling thing. And even at the end, uh, the owner operator came out and was like, hey, man, the reason we do this is because, you know, even though we love doing the shows and we just love wrestling, we're doing this for, I mean, it's pretty much a sold out show in the yeah, gymnasium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was really good. And, and he just had this heartfelt where you could see the tears in his eyes. And I could because I was front row. Yeah. And like, it, it was just, it, it made you feel like, man, I need to come to every show now. Yeah. I need to come to every show because I feel like they're doing something for a purpose here. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's just, nice. yeah, it's not just, yeah, just it's really cool. I, I was really happy. And I, I mean, one, it fulfills my wrestling scratch and two, um, I mean, we bought shirts and food and stuff like that. We did a bunch of things to, you know, donate money. They even had a charity going on, and I was tr- uh, or a charity okay. auction mm-hmm. go on, and I was so totally trying to buy stuff. My <laughs> my friend did, uh, my friend Garen did, but uh, we couldn't. We only had like fifty bucks left at that mm-hmm. point because we <laughs> bought other stuff. And so, like, we were trying to get it up there. But yeah. the thing is, I do want to say this. We at least made the auctions go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, there's a pair of Stone Cold Steve Austin socks oh, no. I wanted. <laughs> I got it up to 45, and I was like, no, I can find them online for less, even though I know it's for a charity. Yeah, yeah. And then um, there was an autograph something by uh, a wrestler in WWE called Seth Rollins. There's an autograph something. And we went all the way up to 80. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. thing sold for like 160 yeah, or yeah. something like that. But we can only bid with cash that we had. Yeah. You know? Oh, and then two of my friends this week, uh, Garen and Topher, they went out uh, Tuesday because I was actually working at the radio station that night. Mm-hmm. And um, the wonderful, one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time, you might even know him. Mick Foley. Yeah, I know who Mick Foley is. Yeah, he was here in Tulsa. Oh, you didn't see him? I couldn't because uh, his autograph session was 3 to 7. I worked 3 to 6.30. So is he ready to get that tooth replaced? Huh? Is he ready no, to... no, that's a, that's a, that's a that's call the... thing. Man. That's, a... that's his thing. Yeah, he has, a thing, he has a thing he puts in there. Okay, all right. Um, but, um... So uh, I guess Topher got me an autographed photo that's of nice. Mick Foley. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mick Foley, I mean, he's a comedian now, basically. <laughs> he goes around. Well, he's a He goes he's around. A he, goes, he goes around and tells stories, yeah. so Yeah, he's a storyteller. And I've seen him uh, once a couple years ago at the KC Improv there in Zona Rosa, mm-hmm. uh, north of Kansas City. And, um, I saw Tom Segura there. Huh? I, tell, I saw Tom Segura there. No, nice. Yeah, and, I've and, seen uh, Brad Williams there. And, uh, I've seen Jake the Snake Roberts there. Yeah. I've Dan seen, Cummins uh, also DMs there just recently. It's great. It's a great Dave, place. Uh, Dave Attell. Yeah. Oh, you saw Dave Attell? Oh, fuck, his... dude. Why did I not see yeah. that? But um, um, by any means, really nice guy. Uh, loved him. Loved him. So if you guys are – not even if you are a wrestling fan, if you just want like to hear a good story, the guy just tells a good story. It's beautiful. I want to I apologize to your listeners real quick. Uh, this is the dead part of January. So this week and part of next week, I'm not doing high profile movies because they're not out. Um, there's no high profile movies. But, but, Let's it, but, best. but before there is a ton, there's the moonfall and there's all the other kinds of done shit coming out in February. But January is the dead month for movies. So that's why we did Brazen. I don't know why you'd think, um, you'd get more people in the theater. Wanting to see movies right now, I think especially was, since the pandemic is. I mean, I guess we got the um, Omar Khan dudes. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's it's everywhere, dude. Omar Khan, you yeah. got it. You fucking got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and your did your wife got it too, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, man. It's crazy. And, and, and then uh, we gave it to your wife. Yeah, it was a great night. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't know about that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you want to get into, uh, well, my, my, I guess my week's been nothing special, just working and shit. Um, we just got from Colorado. Um, that was fun. Oh, dude, come on. Tell about the story about getting a tattoo we in got Colorado. A ta- my wife got a tattoo of a, of a skate from a beloved a tattoo and wellness. and A roller skate. Um, yeah, roller skate. It looks great. Uh, and if you guys want to... You can, if you want to find it, you'll find it. Uh, but go to Beloved Wellness and Spa Instagram, you'll see the skate photo of her great tattoo. Um, it snowed while we were there. <laughs> um, it uh, and I, I went That's down, nice. Yeah, I went downtown. We didn't do a whole Dude, lot. Dude, being in Denver, seeing the mountains, and seeing the snow come down, I would have loved that. That would have no, been The first two nights we were there, the first nights there, it was raining and snowing, and we couldn't see shit because of visibility. But on the way out, like on the way back to the airport, at least on my left, I'm like, God. Why couldn't we see that? It was a beautiful day when we left yeah. for the airport, but we didn't do a whole lot. We went to this um, place called Convergence Center, which is like this interactive art exhibit. Um, I, you know, I went to a record store. I went to a bookstore, a record store called Twist and Shout, and a bookstore called Tattered um, Tattered Cover. I, I, I bought a book there. Nice. Give and me it, comic books. They had a ton of them, uh, but I, I bought a. I bought yeah, a, give me one, not one. You didn't send. I, yeah, bought, yeah. I didn't buy my wife anything either. Uh, but, um, oh well, but, she was getting a tattoo. And, uh, <laughs> I bought a book by Brian Sanderson called Mistborn, and uh, because it was recommended to me, so we see how it turns out. And other than that, man, like I'm just we're we're, we're working and shit and fuck next weekend. But well, yeah, all right, man. <laughs> Let's talk raisin. All right, raisin, raisin, starring not raisin, directed raisin, directed by uh, Monica Mitchell. <laughs> Uh, based on a, the uh, Monica Mitchell's done a bunch of Hallmark movies. Uh, Nora Roberts, everyone knows her, uh, is uh, based on a novel. And then written by Edith Swinson and Donald Martin. They are also worked on a bunch of Hallmark movies. Uh, this stars Alyssa Milano. God, that was great. I want to kill somebody else. Who can I kill? Chris, find me another demon to kill. Uh, s- uh, she plays Grace. Uh, Sam Edge plays, Sam Page plays Ed. I'm sorry I didn't mention my involvement with Ridley when I first saw you at the bookshop. Uh, this also has Malachi Were as Ben, Emily Orup as Kathleen, uh, Matthew Finland as Gerald Baxter, and Allison, uh, Allison Aria as Captain Rivera. No, I just said it was nice, God damn it! and we also seem to have a lot in common. What? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> I could have gone on the whole thing. <laughs> it's got Colin Wheeler, Senator Baxter, all these, all these people you've seen in a bunch of horror movies, because that's basically what this fucking is. Round should we the storyline on this? God, it's so long. <laughs> Is it? Oh my God! It is so long. But the thing is, I bet you it's going to do a better. Never mind. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about yeah. it in a second. After demanding book tour, super mystery novelist Grace McCobb decides to visit her sister Kathleen, who's embroiled in a custody battle after a bitter divorce. Arriving in D.C., Grace is shocked to find Kathleen living in a rundown neighborhood and hoping to afford a hotshot lawyer. Supplementing her merger teacher salary by moonlighting as a phone sex operator. Uh, keep going. Eh. Yeah, yeah. Um, according to Kathleen, Fantasy Inc. guarantees his employees ironclad anonymy, but Grace has her doubts, which are confirmed one horror for horrifying cherry blossom scented night when one of Fantasy Inc.'s operators is murdered. As Grace is drawn to help solve the crime, her life turns into a scene from one of her own books. Yet one of her biggest fans, investigator Ed Jackson, warns her this isn't fact fiction. Real people die, and Grace could be next, for she's setting a trap for a killer more twisted than anything she could imagine. And not even Ed may be able to protect her from a revenant with lust. And death. What a piece of shit this movie is. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. That description was that had to be from the back of the book. Yeah, that yeah, had to yeah. be from the back of the book because it said phone sex no, operator. That, that, no, it was which like, I'm guessing they the shitty the, the shittiest internet. cam girl ever. <laughs> like, all right, I all right. Two reason two reasons I chose this fucking movie. Okay. And so I can defend myself before we rip into it. Okay. One, it has Alyssa Milano in it. Yeah. So I was like, hey, a movie of Alyssa Milano. Maybe she hasn't been around for a while because, yeah. you know, she just hasn't been around for a while. Yeah. Hey, 
I'll be more than happy to give her a chance in a fucking movie because I liked her in the eighties and the nineties. Charmed, you yeah. Know. Charmed. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was a fan of her. Two, it said it was made by Nora Roberts, which is a huge novelist, a huge name in the book world, you know. So I'm like, cool, this will be great. That at least somebody will try. Who the fuck gave this to the goddamn you know what? No. This ain't even a Hallmark movie because that'd be shitting on Hallmark movies more. <laughs> like this was bad. Yeah, it was awful. It was so fucking awful. So bad. Oh my god! I don't even know what I can rate this. Like it's so bad. I've been going over this back and forth. Me and my wife watches together, and it got <laughs> to the point where we were just fucking laughing at it yeah i was i was uh, sitting alone in my living room with a dog watching this i texted my brother i'm like i'm like this just keeps getting worse and worse <laughs> like like it did like i didn't think it'd get any worse or more cliched or anything i was like i was like how are they doing this because one the uh, cam girl uh, i don't know who pays for fantasy ink uh or mormons or i mean it's the shittiest cam girl you've ever seen like like yeah yeah, yeah. All right, uh, and also, all right, all right, all right, here. Let's tear apart the actual... Okay, the plot. The actual thing. Okay. The actual parts of this movie. Okay. One, cinematography looked like it was a goddamn mm. sit, uh, sitcom yeah. or uh, or a uh, soap opera, uh-huh. yeah. right? Yeah. Two, whoever edited this shit... Oh, my God. Th- there's, there's so like, much wrong with no this. Space. There's no space, you know? And, uh, I, and in movies, okay. sometimes... You got to let a, a scene breathe a little bit, like, you know, with an outro or intro of people walking away, yeah. of people doing stuff. There wasn't that. Two people would talk, they'd be done, clip over to them talking again in a completely different situation, like, <laughs> ten hours later. Like, I don't understand the very, the very beginning of the movie. So she's a superstar, like, superstar mystery novelist. And then she just right. she gives a reading and she just walks to her car. No one's bothering her, except for her agent. Oh, the other one's following her. No one's trying to talk to her. She gets in her car and drives to DC. By the way, the neighborhood she went to not run down at all. The house is fucking huge. Like, like, like this whole fucking thing is makes no sense at all. Like, no, no. And at first, I was like kind of excited. I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a uh, murder. She wrote because you know, I you know, I, I saw the uh, I I read the little clip of it or something like that. And I was like, this is going to be like murder, she wrote. She's a novelist that's trying to help the cops mm-hmm. find the, you know, because I'm a fan of murder, she wrote. Yeah, I don't yeah, give yeah a fuck. sure. Yeah, man, you're fine. You're fine. Bomb. Um, anyway. Are you, are you Jenx or uh, are you, um, Jen, uh, are you, uh, I'm on, I'm 1980s when I was born. So, so I'm on that cusp or like okay. some people tell me I'm this and some people well, say I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a squarely a millennial, you know, I, I remember, we'll talk about it later, but yeah, this movie fucking sucks, dude. It's an awful movie. <laughs> like, I wanted this to be good. I wanted this to be good. And it just kept getting bad and bad. It was the editing, the cinematography, the, you know, the two main people that are supposed God to be boinking. Damn, listen, listen. And I have no chemistry Grace whatsoever. and Ed just fucking and, suck. Okay, this is supposed to be a murder mystery, uh-huh. right? Yeah. A murder mystery, but it's and there there there's parts where they're like, oh, it could be this person, it could be this person. But you know who but it is all fucking time. As soon as you see the person, <laughs> yeah, yeah. as soon as you see them, you're like, that's the motherfucker right there. Oh, my favorite part. Like, is, my favorite part is put what, a bright neon light above him, I, saying, "This is the guy." I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it away, but there's a part where um. Where Alyssa Milano goes to the chief and suggests something. She's like, the perfect, let's do that. I'm like, in no fucking world would that ever happen. Like, no. this, uh, it's so bad, man. And like, and I, there's like, yeah, there, the conversation between her and the chief where yeah. she said something, yeah. and the chief's like, no, I'm not going to allow that to happen. And then she points out something that's so fucking <laughs> obvious. Dude. A third grader that's blind, mute, and deaf yeah. could have fucking pointed it out. Yeah. Oh, I guess I'm going to add you to the case yeah, now. Dude. No. Nora Roberts wrote this book. I'm sure the book oh. is ten times better. I would tell you to read the fucking book. It sounds like it'd be a great story to read. I think the only thing the I liked person- about the only thing I liked about it was Malachi Ware, the Ben, who was Ed's partner in this. Uh, the, yeah, the, I liked his hair. <laughs> That's about yeah. it. <laughs> That's about and, it. Um, I actually I saw an interview after I watched. You know, because I was yeah. doing the thing, and um, 
he said a lot of reasons he didn't get a lot of parts in his life was because of his hair. Well, I like I like his hair, Malachi. And, but okay. um, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm trying to figure. I like, okay, all right. I like the the only thing I like about this fucking movie uh-huh. is the idea <laughs> of this movie. It's just so bad, man. It's it's. It's a, uh, oh man, <laughs> the idea of it, like a one, like someone says a tagline, something you could do, you know, and be like, oh, that would be a cool movie. But this movie is not cool. This movie is fucking awful. I don't know. Like it's, it's Hallmarky, but even worse. You know what I mean? Because Hallmark wouldn't put this out. Uh, Lifetime does better to work than this, which is crazy to say, because it's, it's a Lifetime movie, but way worse. <laughs> way worse. Way Worse, this I this is why I wanted to give you why I I picked this movie because um, I'm sorry I apologize <laughs> I, I I saw murder mystery Alyssa Alyssa Milano Nora Roberts I was like let's give that a shot let's try to knock this one out there well, well, and plus we, some... we just needed a movie this week yeah yeah and um. Real Damn, quick, dude. Real quick, did you watch uh, Aziz Ansari's new thing, Nightclub Comedian? Not yet. It's funny. It's like 30 minutes. Oh, it's only like 30 minutes? Yeah, because yeah, it's uh, right, It's like he does the comedy cell in New York. So it's uh, just this little place, a little small thing. He just drops in, does 30 minutes. It's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen the preview. Me and my wife laughed at it last night. She's like, oh, we'll watch that later. It's like, damn straight, we'll watch that later. But this movie, and, um, do you have quotes for this movie? <laughs> I do. I did write down a couple of things. Not much, though. All right. Um, I'm just telling you, she didn't decide to die that night. (laughs) Measure twice, cut once. To tweet or not to tweet? That is the question. Oh, my. I just just cringing inside. (laughs) I know. We had an incredible night. It was okay. Well, I had an incredible night. The money spent on these fantasies. Man, we are in the wrong business. Is that how you like it? Have you been naughty? (laughs) The the suspects become a long one when it comes to a dead hooker. There's killers in every tax bracket. This is desire, and I'm in the mood to play. Once is not going to be enough. I should say it the way they said. (sighs) Once is not going to be enough. Here's the part we have written. Grieving for his mother, you know, the mother of Missouri. That's it. That's all I got, bro. My score is a 1.2. My score is a 0. 0.5. <laughs> this is a this is a a S- 0. 0.5. This is an STD tag. This is some that do. This is definitely some that do. Oh my god. I don't see after anything. This, after this, I have this bump in my lip now, right here. Yeah. And I think I got herpes. I got <laughs> the STD from, from this movie. And oh my gosh, it was so I love Alyssa Milano. And I went back and there there seems to be some cute things that Sam Page were in and uh <laughs> Al- Allison already had this great scene and and fucking peacemaker and I hope I wish them all the best. But goddamn, this is like the thing you find for fifty cents at Walmart mm-hmm. in the DVD bin. Yeah, yeah, for fifty cents, or, or you know, we actually get to watch for free, which is fucking way too much that we paid for this. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's an awful fucking movie, and I can't believe that we. This is the worst movie I think we've seen for the show. I think it's the worst movie ever in our entire history of watching this entire show. Like, you can beg, you know, to differ about Death Wish with Bruce Willis yeah, or, or fucking uh, whatever other movies that we've watched. We can sit there and argue over that shit all day long. I don't but think, this well, one, I think, I think this, I mean, it's just, you know, 
two two or three weeks into January, <coughs> this will be uh, probably the top of my worst movies you've seen this year list. I don't see this. I don't see this like, I, right. I, I just don't think we'll Someone's just... going to have to really offend me, <laughs> really piss me off, or have some really bad acting. <laughs> and it, this is all bad. This is bad. Yeah, this is a bad movie. And Wilson Lana, she tries her best, but this is a fucking shitty movie. And, um, yeah. Uh, no, no, she couldn't carry it. it yeah. I mean, it wasn't her, too. It was the editing, uh, ed- editing the um, cinematography, the, like, the music in the just, background was just cheesy. Just the writing of this is so god-awful. Um, this is so god-awful. So, now we are on... Netflix! The- Netflix! I know you're spending money right now, Netflix, and if anybody that works at Netflix ever hears this podcast, let me tell you... Do not invest in the two people that wrote this screenplay <laughs> from Nora Robertsburg or the director. What did the director make? What did we even talk about the director? No, because she, she, okay. it's like Christmas movies for Hallmark and stuff. It's it's bad. Yeah, uh, these are not people you invest in. All right, Alyssa Milano, give her give her a job somewhere else. She's a good actress. She, I know she has. She's done it good in back in the in the past. Um, I don't know if she's a bitch. Like I mean, I guess all the girls, all the girls from Charmed were bitches. I guess. Yeah, maybe. I no, I mean, I heard that. Didn't you hear that? Uh, no, is Rose McGowan a bitch too? Ro- yeah, Rose McGowan, like fucking goddamn. I don't even want to hear the craziness that comes out of her mouth sometimes <laughs> the week. Um. But man, I'm done with this. Let's get into news some because I got no. Some shit we to we talk got about. Rotten Tomatoes for this shit. <laughs> oh shit! Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, so uh, uh, every uh, week, every movie, every week, we uh, give. I have Neil guess the audience score and the critic score for break for the movies. Um. So Neil, what is the audience score for this movie? What do you think it is? Has to be twenty two. Thirteen percent. Nice. I, I was close. I just I was trying to I was I thinking because people like Hallmark. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I thought I'd give it a little higher. Yeah, I thought, thought like, there probably some people that sat down and was like, "This is okay. It's good." <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, um, I want to warn you right now. There's not a critics consensus on this because why would they? But what is the critics score? <laughs> Nine. Eighteen percent. Well, which I'm surprised by. Yeah. Who? Who? Who gave this positive influence? Do you want me to read you one? Do you want me to read you a positive one? <laughs> this so, isn't really a positive yeah, one. This is from Lindsay right. Traves from from uh, Pajiba, which I'm not, I'm not sure this. All, right, all right. Okay. This isn't about accuracy or reality. It's about Yankee Candle vanilla scented escapism. What makes it interesting is the story of the streamer's business model pivoting to lap up the spray of its network competitors, which I don't fucking know. How what what was worth watching this? Nothing was interesting about this movie, and it's it's just it's so it's a someone said Brazen is the murder mystery version of a Hallmark Christmas romance. <laughs> um, oh, dude, there it is. That that's the key. Right there. No, because you know what, Hallmark movies sometimes have some good ones, and this is oh, not good. This is a good one from Mick LaSalle's San Francisco Chronicle. It's not a good one. It's a bad. It, he goes, it's not boring bad, but flashy bad. It's not, I'm sick of this already. It's, I can't believe what I'm looking at. <laughs> yes. No. So it's, it's a bad no. movie. It's a bad no. movie. The guys, uh, go ahead. Uh, if this is on your to watch list, take it off. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get into the, we got a lot of news to talk about. Okay, cool. We got let's, a lot of news. Let's do it. Let's get going. This is the movie Don't Suck and some of the news. I'm going to tell Chris a bunch of stuff that he might have heard about, but he acts like he doesn't when I tell him. I might have. We'll see. (laughs) All right. Let's start off with the sad one. Okay. Okay. We got got, got to do it because even though what happened and how and all that stuff doesn't matter, uh, one of the greatest singers and actors, because he was in Fight Club, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Um, or and he was in music videos. Uh, heck, he was in um, Pick a Destiny. Yeah, with, uh, seen the Pick a Destiny. Yeah, with Jack Black. And, yeah, yep. yep. The great, the ever Meatloaf a Day uh, passed away yep. at the age of seventy four. Now, what he died of was COVID. He yeah. was an anti vaxxer anti masker. 
I, I just, I'm not going to say anything against anybody. I'm just well, saying well, I've we, had COVID. We don't, know I've had relatives. we don't know exactly how he died, but that that's that's speculated because no one's saying anything. But yeah, it turns out that if, if he died from COVID, he's an anti-masker, anti-vaxxer, and he might still be here today if he got a vaccine. Yeah, and, and you know what, guys? I'm not going to make this a huge speech. I'm just going to say the guy was a great artist. Um, I own his vinyl records. I I mean, yeah, about I, hell, right? Oh, dude, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to have the eight you. track. Oh, yeah. I used to have the eight track <laughs> to Bad Out of Hell. When I was, um, I think, in my, this is my teen years mm-hmm. when Bad Out of the Hell 2 came out. Yeah. You know, um, and I actually dated a girl. I think I was like 13 at the time. <laughs> and this is when I lived in Ohio, 12 or 13, 13 or, yeah, 13, I think. I lived in Ohio, and there's a girl I used to make out with all the time. <laughs> to bad out of hell, too. I mean, objects in the rearview mirror. One of my favorite songs, and I don't think a lot of people, um, uh, one of my favorite songs, and not just of his collection, of just literally one of my favorite songs yeah. in history. Yeah. And it's not a famous song a deep by trick. any means. It's a deep cut. <laughs> it's a deep cut. It's called Life is a Limit and I Want My Money Back. <laughs> I love that song by Meatloaf. If you get a chance, look it up, Spotify, whatever, everywhere, wherever you can, your Apple Music, whatever. But Life is a Limit and I Want My Money Back is such a good His it's, name was Robert Paulson. His name was Robert Paulson. So um, that that's a great loss to the music world. I never got to see him live. Wish I could have mm. at some point. Um, but at this point, now let's make it cheery. Let's make it happy. Let's Woo! cheer you up, Chris. Okay, let's Chris, do it. Let's do it. How, how do we cheer you up? How do we cheer you up? Uh, you talk about uh, actors I love or directors I love, perhaps. Oh, actors or love. Okay. What if I say... Jim and Michael are going to come back to the big screen. I heard about this. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> the Office stars, John Kronoski and Steve Carell, are going to renew for a Paramount movie. Um, now, they'll be sharing the screen. Now, the thing is, the full plot details haven't been diverged for the movie If. And that's the name of the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a family movie in development for Paramount. That's all we got. Um, The assembly cast is Alan Kim. Luke Gossip Jr. I didn't even know he was still alive. Who would you say the first one was? That makes me sad. Huh? Who would you say the first one was? Before Luke Gossip Jr.? Alan Kim. Okay. Luke Gossip Jr. Callie Fleming. Fiona Shaw. uh, Sophie Waller-Bridge. And some... Some uh, Canadian guy, uh, Ryan something, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, who's that? I've never heard of him. Some guy in <laughs> Ottawa just named a street actor. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But there's no details on the movie yet, but, I mean, that's enough right John, there. To make John me Krasinski's see. directing it, right? I mean, like. Yeah, um, and and Steve Carell's in it. I mean, what more do you need? What more do you need? Yeah. That's enough for me to be there in five <laughs> seconds. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. If you ever say, hey. I mean, you can tell me the worst fucking movie details about a movie. You can be like, it's about dinosaurs playing poker, you know, <laughs> eating potato salad. And I'd be like, I don't want to see that. And then you'd be like, John Krasinski directed. Okay, why? Well, uh, I want to see it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a hit. All right, let's talk about it. If uh, you are a listener of podcasts like ours, I and we talk about this podcaster a lot because we're huge fans of this podcaster, uh, Mark, Mark Marin. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So WTF this week has blashed out the biggest controversy really? that has happened in a long time from podcasts. Oh, the dink, and that is because <laughs> the great actor Peter Dinklage. Um went against uh, was praising how they um what's the best way to say this um I'm going to see if they got a quote I like Dinklage okay a lot. but anyway but it, it it doesn't have the quote that Dinklage said in this in this article and I'm sorry and I I apologize for that I should have brought up a different article so I had to quote but um to kind of give an overscape what he said was basically okay they're so happy they casted a Latina 
actress, which he goes, I had nothing against, nothing Snow against White. her. Snow White, right? But it's still Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, he's he a, goes, the dwarfs are the, this problem he has with, and I, I agree with him. So Disney, in answer of this, is saying that now the dwarves are going to be like magical creatures, and they're not going to be like you know, little people, or I, I, I don't think I can say the, the other words considered racial now, right? It's, or it's, bad. it's, it's considered uh, discriminatory for sure. It's a yeah, yeah. So short people or, or, or people. I'm not going to say little people. I don't like little people. I don't like calling them little people. That's, short not, people. that's I mean, I, I, I've, I know a few and they prefer the term little people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't like calling any person little. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think everybody is what there is. Yeah. But Brad Williams, the yeah. stand-up comedian, yeah. he has put his two cents in this. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. And, and he thinks he has figured the go-around. Okay. All right? And he says, instead of having... Let's see. Let's see. Let's take a... Spe- he goes, let's take a step back and look... Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. This is actually the quote from Peter Dinklage. Okay. I'm sorry. I had this marked and I marked it wrong. Mm. Um, but it says, take a step back and look at what you're doing. It makes no sense to me. You're progressive in one way, and you're still making that fucking backward story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. What the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> I have done nothing to advance, you know, the cause. Well, Brad Williams has come up and said... He's right, but at the same time, I'm torn because it's like, yes, it's mildly offenses, but at the same time, I really need the fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> and Williams explains, I think there's ways to fix it. I think there's a way you can still do a progressive Snow White and not offend the dwarves. Like, make Snow White end up with one of the dwarves. How about that? I mean, she goes for a prince who made out with her while she was, like, legally fucking dead. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of creepy, right? She would go for one of the dwarves, right? Yeah. Man, so, Doc, Doc, Doc slinging that dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's dopey. Come on, man. It's all dopey. We all know it's I played dopey. this. I played this game on a Jackbox last week, a couple weeks ago, and, you know, it was, like, mm-hmm. with, like, six other people in there trying to figure out who of the dwarves would be, and everyone picked dopey. For me, including myself. Really? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of disappointing. You know, but, you, you, you're 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 kind of disappointing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the Dink man, I love Dinklage. So I mean, we can't wait to see Toronto, which comes out next month, right? Yeah, no shit. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. All right, let's go to the biggest man in all of movies of all time ever, because he is the great one. The Rock. He is going to be in the biggest video game movie made into a movie of all time. Which which game is that? That's it. That's all oh, we get. What the fuck? Why do I? <laughs> I know. Everybody is thinking it's going to be Call of Duty. I think it's going to be Gears of War. Gears of War? Yeah. Might be Gears of War. Oh, oh but let's talk about another little, Disney live action movie. Real quick, I want to mention are you excited to see Uncharted? Yeah, of course, Tom Holland. I'm a big fan of the Uncharted series, and Tom Holland doesn't say Nathan Drake to me, but I'm I'm keeping an open mind. I hope I like it. I really do. I really hope I like it. Tom Holland, that's enough for me. Okay. Right. Tom Holland, Walmart, Mark Wahlberg. Is that enough for yep. you? I'm there. Okay. I'm there. <laughs> right. I'm there. Hopefully, it's a good movie. Disney is now developing, and I can't believe I'm saying these words out of my fucking mouth right now. Um, Disney is developing a live action remake. Of another Amer- uh, animated classic, The Aristocrats. Why? Why the fuck are they doing this? What the hell? Did they not see that the cats? Wait, wait, movie is didn't it, is well? it, isn't it Aristocats or Aristocrats? It's Aristocats, right? Mm-hmm. It's, so the thing is about about Disney is they are always developing something, and it's disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> it's disappointing. Why are they doing this? Now, Disney's not. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. We can't say that because I, I watch Bubba Fett. And okay. I watch Marvel movies. That's Disney too. I know, I know, but but how excited? I mean, you're excited about those two things, but when it comes to Disney, what's the last thing at Disney made that you're like, "Fuck, wait, can't wait to see it"? You know, like like. 
You know, I can't even think. You're right. You're one hundred percent. Yeah. Toy Story Four. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's Pixar still. Like Disney, the company, they have only these things like Marvel and you know Lucasfilm, and uh, Pixar is a, a subset of that. And I right, I, I can't like, I can't like really. I mean, what the fuck? Like, like I don't care. I just. Yeah, man, like, they own cool shit, Marvel and Lucasfilm, but I can't think of the last thing that Disney made itself that I was like, can't fucking wait to see it. Uh, but, I, right. but no, Encanto was good, though. I liked Encanto. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I understand. All right, we got to move on, man. I said there's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Knives Out 2, Knives Out 2 mm-hmm. will be on Netflix late this year. So it'll be at the end of this year. It'll be November or December. They don't have an exact date, but that is... Wait, is it going, it's going on Netflix? Yeah. The oh, one she bought. Shit. Man. The, and it's the same director, same writers and everything. I know, but it's just it's going to Netflix, which is kind of good news. I mean, that we don't have to rush out to the mm-hmm. theater to see it. I mean, we, I know you and I are, are just... Cannot fucking wait to see the second one, dude. The first one was so goddamn good. All right. Now... Mm-hmm. Remember the movie Yesterday? Yes, I do. Yeah. Where the guy wakes yeah. up and he's yeah. the only one that remembers the Beatles existed. Yeah. 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 They're being sued. For, from, by who? For a hundred and, for, um, let's see, what, what, what was the price? For $5 million. By who? By two fans of the movie. That's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Because they falsely advertised that Anna D. Armas was going to be in the movie. Uh, yeah. That's, and that's, they cut her out. That's going nowhere. That's not going to happen. It's, it's going nowhere. $5 million for, I mean, if anything, you could pay them the money they spent to see the movie. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, yesterday is a good movie. I don't know, man. That's false advertisement. I've seen. I mean, I've seen clips from all advertising, that, man. I really think people need to. I do, really do you think, think it's worth five million dollars, though. Yeah, you know why? Because that doesn't just stop movies from false advertisement. That stops pharmaceuticals. That stops. You know, it stops everything across the board. It doesn't stop Joe Rogan. We don't talk about <laughs> pieces right. of shit on all this right. podcast. All right, all right. Um, Ivory Aquino joins the Batgirl movie as the first ever trans character in a DC comic book movie. Hey, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. She will be playing uh, 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 Barbara Gordon's roommate, mm-hmm. Alicia Yayo. And, uh, yeah, um, I'm happy. Yeah. I I hope... I hope this all goes well. You know, of course, Batgirl's already getting some backlash because of her outfit or and doesn't look like I don't know what the fuck is up with people. You're, you're Whatever gonna, you want to see it, right? Like the yeah, I'm down for it. I'm down. I'm down like a freaking. Hopefully, they maybe they can add Robin in there at some point because uh, you know. Do you realize in cinema we have not had a Robin? Robin since Batman for Batman, 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 Batman and Robin. Yeah, George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell. Yeah, some people would argue that uh, Jogo was one, but he was not Robin. No, no, no. Hey, did you ever watch Girls Trip? I did. With watch- Tiffany Haddish. No, man. Regina I mean, Hall. No, everyone talks about good. Is I haven't got a chance to watch it. I heard it's really funny. Oh God, you and your wife get stoned and watch this shit, dude. Okay. Like literally, it's like it's a funny ass. Yeah, movie. I heard it's I, hilarious. I mean, like it's like Hangover funny. It's like that. Okay, you know. And um, I don't know, a little more sentimental. A uh, girls' trip two is now officially is happening. Good, uh, that's a, I know the first one was that made Tiffany has a star basically. Yeah, because she she cuts out. I'm telling you, dude. I mean, it's Regina Hall, Queen Latifah, Jada Pinkett Smith, and Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, I mean they're all fucking superstars. They're all yeah. they're all great. So that's starting to happen. They're they're working on that. So I'm I'm a, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Also talking about another sequel. Netflix has confirmed Squid Game season two. Okay, I mean I I watched season one and I sort of wonder where season two is going to go. I guess I mean personally, can we talk about it a little bit? Just a little bit, like, mm-hmm. like the ending. A yeah, bit? yeah. I mean it's been it's all been long enough. We can talk about Squid Game, right? Yeah, I would have gone to see my daughter personally. 
<laughs> like, like, I would have, I, I would have held on to a little money, and I would have gone to see my daughter, and I would be like, "Hey, do you like my new hair? Let's hang out a bit." And then I would, then I would have come back and and uh, fight the fight the fight the organization. But you know, I'm, uh, hey man, we watched the first season, me and my wife, just every day we'd sit down. Every night we sit down. We didn't. We watch that. Such a good, such a good show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it was ridiculous. Like I stopped everything I was watching, just just to watch just to watch that show, Mm -hmm. and it made me happy in ways um, that I cannot (laughs) even talk about on this um, way. All right, let's talk about another sequel that's happening. Okay, another sequel. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. A Christmas Story. Okay. Yeah, I mean. In the works with Peter Billingsing returning as Ralphie. Do you see this working? I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad he's doing some again because doesn't he own like a freaking horse ranch or something? Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. So, I mean. I mean, hopefully, I mean, hopefully it doesn't suck, but I, I don't see it even a, because of, when the Christmas story first came out, it wasn't like it, it is now. It was just a movie, and uh, over mm-hmm. time it gained a cult following. So when you you make a sequel to a cult following, it has these you know crazy expectations. I don't know what they're expecting personally. I mean, I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there people. I'm a, sure people are going around saying, "Fuck around and find out." But um, the Predator prequel mm. is coming out called Prey, and it's going to take inspiration from the video game franchise God of War. Okay, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know how those two uh, marry together, but we'll watch it for sure. I mean, I mean, it's. It'll be the fifth movie in the Predator franchise and the dropped alien warrior in the past, taking the series back in time and exploring the iconic movie monster's first visit to Earth. You remember what uh, what uh, Arnold said to him? You are one ugly motherfucker. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are one ugly motherfucker. Yeah. Anyway, um, and last but not least... I saved this for the last, just for you. For me, oh, I feel for I feel person. special. I feel special. Oh, you give my last name on air. Look what you do. Look what you did. Are you ready? I'm ready, dude. Let's do this. Are you ready? Of course I am. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Are you sure you're ready? Just fucking tell me, dude. Just sit out. <laughs> New Line Cinema is moving forward. With Mortal Kombat 2. Okay. With the writer from the new series, Moon Knight. Okay. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2, I hope that they make it better than the first one. Yep. I, I want that tournament, man. We didn't get that in the first one. We were like, wait for the tournament. Uh, much of it was just a bunch of fucking, like, a uh, bunch of fucking training, mm-hmm. you know? So. Yeah. And they're saying that there'll be more blood and gore. Um, there's a picture of The Miz from WWE as Johnny Cage. As Johnny Cage, because people have been adding their, you know, hey, yeah. this guy, this guy, this guy. But um, this is the guy who wrote Moon Knight, also wrote The Umbrella Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also created the Exorcist TV series and is the writer of The Lazarus Effect, the original Fantastic Four. Oh, no. I mean, there are Lazarus Effect, though. Well, no, yeah, but I mean the original Fantastic okay, Four was okay, fine. Yeah. The first, the, the first one with uh, you know yeah, Chris yeah. Evans and mm-hmm. Jessica Alba and stuff like that. But um, still, man, let's bring it. Let's do it because there's nothing I want to hear more than Mortal Kombat. I, I, I wish I still had that on my soundboard. Otherwise, I'd play it. <laughs> I know, right? If you'd let me know, I could, I could have loaded up. Is that it though? That's all news, right? No, that's the news. That was the movies that don't suck in some of their news. Now Chris is going to touch you and your no-nos with your no-nos with the yo-yos. Get ready. For the bite, last movie. Bite the, bite the pillow. We're going to dry. 
Um, no, uh, this is a uh, we are talking about being the Ricardos, directed by the amazing Aaron Sorkin. You guys know him as directing the you know Molly's Game, the Trials of Chicago Seven, and being the Ricardos, uh, this new one. But he also is basically known for his amazing uh, dialogue and things like West Wing, uh, Charlie Wilson's War, The Social Network, Mayball, Newsroom, Trials of Chicago Seven, and now he's going with being the Ricardos, which is uh, great. It stars. The amazing, the beautiful, the ageless Nicole Kidman. You know what I wish? I wish you would stop comparing Danny to Arthur. She plays Lucille Ball. Javier Bardem, who is nothing like Desi Arnaz, but here he is. He regrets his unprofessional. They kept me for five months. And then also it stars the amazing, the ever amenable J.K. Simmons as William Frawley. Are you one of those single tier people? And uh, Nina Arianda as Vivian Vance. Oh. I am grateful that you are willing to buy me the heart of the ocean. This also stars Tony Hill as Jess Oppenheimer, Aaliyah Shockwa as Madeline Pugh, Jake Lacey as Bob Carroll, Luna Lavin as Older Mo- Just, you know, people we've seen everywhere are in this movie. Everywhere. Yeah. Don't forget Clark Gregg. You always got to say Clark Gregg. Clark, yeah, Clark Gregg. Clark Gregg is my, Clark Gregg's my homie. Yeah, and also uh, Nelson Franklin. Why? Why? Why what? Why are both movies... Uh, Storylines today just uh, fucking just go for ridiculous. It, man. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> in 1939, L- Lucy Ball is contracted by to RKO or really kinky orgasm pictures. <laughs> That's not she true, gets yeah. that was a meatloaf thing. Okay. Uh, anyway, right. yeah. uh, anyway, um, let's start over. In 1939, Lucy Ball is contracted RKO Pictures. She gets small parts in big studio productions, but featured mainly in low-budget films. She meets one of the film's cast, the charismatic 22-year-old Cuban singer Desi Arnaz, and the two fall for each other instantaneously. Months after filming, they marry and buy a home in Hollywood. Desi has a successful stint fronting the Desi Arnaz Orchestra that tours around the country. Wow, this is such a long no, thing. No, it has no, nothing no. to do with the damn film. Uh, what is the what is the thing? What's the thing up here? The storyline. Here we go. Okay. Boom, I'm done. Okay. I'm done with that storyline. Okay. Follow. <laughs> this movie follows Lucy and Desi as they face a crisis that could end their careers and another that could end their marriage. That is better. Okay, so that here, made it better. This we, when I first heard about this movie, I'm like, it's gonna be a long ass fucking epic, uh, you know, biography. No, this covers a week, a week in what happens. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, in the movie, yeah, yeah it covers a week in the, in the movie. Not in real life, though. Yeah, not, not in real life. life. But but it covers a week in the production schedule on the a one of the most tumultuous times of uh I love Lucy right um and I when I when I saw that I was like thank God and then I saw Aaron Sorkin wrote that wrote and wrote I'm like thank God um this movie isn't getting a whole lot of I mean people like it but people are talking shit I I actually really like this movie oh man I I am gonna I'm just gonna say this I fucking loved. This movie. Oh yeah, okay. I loved this movie. Yeah, yeah. This was, um, um, man, was this good? It was really good. Um, Aaron Sorkin, he Nicole Kidman, dude, Jesus Christ, dude, Jesus, so good. she should. I mean, her and Kristen Stewart are gonna fight over <laughs> the best actress award yeah, this year. For Spencer I in swear. this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's not because I like Spencer the movie, but I love this movie. Um, but both of their performances were on point for the person they were. I mean, I, there's times in this movie where I'm like, is that Nicole Kidman? Or did they actually like put in the voice of Lucille Ball? The thing about Nicole Kidman is she, she is a chameleon in whatever role. Like I was looking at him like that to me, that could be Lucille Ball. Like, like that. That's what I was thinking. The whole movie she's so good in it. So good. Uh, but I think Javier Bidem was th- this is my only gripe with it. He's a little bit miscast. I don't think it was like Desi Arnaz. They could have used someone that's a. I mean, Javier Bidem's a fantastic actor. I think. I think. I think. He did a good job mm-hmm. in this movie. Visually, yeah. Visually, he looks nothing like <laughs> Desi Arnaz. Because Desi Arnaz, like, literally looked like he was 22 years old until he was, like, 105. Or yeah. when he died, yeah, you know, yeah. until he died. I don't think the guy ever had a wrinkle on his face. No, he's... He, 
He did sound like him, though. He did good. Yeah, he sounded like him. His mannerisms, he did a great job. And and Nicole Kidman, though, Dude. like, I, I knock it out of the park. J.K. Simmons as... Always um, so good. He was, I, I feel like... As William Farley or Fred or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, <laughs> his knocked it out of the... Everyone knocked it out of the park. Everyone knocked it out of the park in this movie. And I really like to. I mean, the screenplay in this is fantastic. The uh, there's something that Aaron Sorkin does great. It's dialogue, and so it's just snappy. It just goes. Everything about this movie works for me, you know. Right. Um. But dude, like, I I've heard bad things about this, and I don't know why. It's such a good movie. Like it, it's literally one of those movies that um I didn't want it to end. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't want this movie to end. I didn't want it to be over. It was just... Were you upset and, about, about what, what uh, Desernes did? I was, like, really upset. I was like, fuck. Like, because... I mean, at the end of it. Like, uh, what happened in real life? Because people... Spoiler, I guess. Lucy and Desi do not stay together later in life. They divorce. Because of Desi's infidelity. No, no, no. If you watch any biography mm-hmm. ever, um, Desi Arnaz is a it was always a big man hoe. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, always. Yeah. He never stopped cheating. He yeah. has slept with everybody. And his excuse all the time was that it's cool because I'm just sleeping with hookers. Yeah, and people want to talk about uh, cultural differences. I don't know if that's the case. But, but, but I mean, again, the chemistry between uh, Nicole and Javier in this, unmatched, dude. Unmatched. No, no, the charts. all four. Uh, not, not even all four. Mm. Everyone. Yeah. The entire cast. Yeah. Even the writers. The um, the, the writers Adam that are Jess, the writers yeah, for the, yeah. the, the I Love Lucy show. Car Clark. Um, <laughs> and, and the four main actors that are playing the stars from I Love Lucy. Yeah, dude. Um, man. It's off the charts. Off the, off the charts chemistry, dude. All of them were fucking amazing. And I, I, I really... I, I have no... Complaints about this movie at all? At all? Like it grew on me too. I've heard people talk shit about it. I don't get it. Um, I have a coworker who hates this movie. Uh, but I will say I don't have a connection to I Love Lucy like some people right. do. Uh, it was it was just an old show to me, and I've seen episodes, sure. But uh, I I easily see Nicole Kidman grabbing her second oh, Oscar. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, no, no question. I see I see Kristen Stewart grabbing her first, but. It's neck and neck, dude. These these out of the actors we've seen, I see, I see Nicole Kidman, man, uh, uh, getting a nomination. I mean, it's it's something else, dude. And I know we slept on this thing. Uh, it came out like late December, and I'm I'm yeah I'm upset that we slept on it because I really enjoyed this movie. And I, I didn't sleep on it. I actually did asked you, you twice. <laughs> did you watch this before? Twice. Did you watch this before or after Brazen? After, but like by days. Okay, because because to me, I watched this the day after Brazen, and I was like, "Oh, this is what the movie looks like." <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> You're like, this is what a film looks like. Yeah. Uh, I, I do have to say this: I was tired. Um, my sleep schedule's been really fucking weird. Yeah, and I fell asleep twenty minutes into this movie. <laughs> you start over. And I woke up, and my wife has watched like, a, a, like I took like a forty minute nap. Yeah. <laughs> and I woke up, and my wife's like, "Oh my god, you, this movie is so good," you know. And she thought I was just going to continue watching it from that point on. And I was like, "No, I got to rewind yeah, it back movie, to where I, I fell asleep." Yeah. And she's like, "Fuck you! I'm going in the other room and watching." It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "All right, I won't rewind it until you go in the other room and turn it on." But yeah, this. But uh, is- she loved it too. I mean, this was uh, man. Uh, it talks about the communist, um, the Red Lucille Scare. Ball. Yeah, the Red Scare. Uh, the Red Scare yeah. of Lucille Ball, which was a big thing, and then it. it I mean it. Aaron Sorkin played this cheap trick that he does all the time, which is he makes you feel triumphant at the end of the movie. You're all like, you want to cheer with everyone else? You want to stamp and clap? You know, like they did, like did the trial of Chicago yeah, Seven. This movie, I mean, I, I, I can't even. One, I can't believe this is an Amazon movie. <laughs> this is an Amazon Prime movie. It's 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 too quality, man. And this is this isn't this this should have been at the theaters. <laughs> this should have been this is this was like a cinematic piece of art. And 
Remember, we had this conversation a couple weeks ago, I think, where I stated that movies that are dramas like this mm-hmm. are probably not going to be released in the big movie theater, and you're only going to be able to see this on streaming networks. Um, and kind of sad that I couldn't see this in a the theater. Yeah. You know, but at the same time... I think it was in theaters for a little bit. I think uh, it's like theaters had this. But again, it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't wild wide release. I don't think. I mean, we could be wrong. Man, they, they, they. I mean, I'm, and this sucks because you know when you do a movie review thing, you're trying to knit and pick, and you're trying to figure out what are the bad parts to tell people about. It's hard to do this movie. It's hard to find bad parts. I know this is the first movie, one of the first movies of 2022 that we're watching, mm-hmm. but it's going to be really hard this year. To fucking top this movie. Oh, for you owed to that much. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is just like, by any means, because I love character work. Mm-hmm. I love character work. You know, Especially, Lucy's daughter said this thing was amazing. She loved it. Lucy, mm-hmm. Lucy, Ball, and Lucy Ball's daughter. Yeah. There's only one movie last year that even comes close to this movie, and we all know what movie that is. That's right, man. And that is <laughs> Barb and Star. <laughs> Oh, you finally showed me. I forgot. It's just sitting there. Anyway, um, no, but um, character work wise, like man, and I I really love the the structure of this movie. I really love the structure. That's I can't I can't talk much about how much I thought this would be like a a big long sweeping kind of boring uh, biopic. No, it's exciting. You know, yeah. There's some and and you're involved, and then like you get kind of like. And I don't know if it was exactly or how uh, Lucille Ball actually acts or how she figured things out comedically wise, mm. but Nicole Kidman plays that part of like how she looks at a scene and digests it and yeah. like figures out what will work and what will get the laugh. Like, there's several, I think, three or four scenes in this movie where she does that, where I'm just like, I, like, I want a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Aaron Sorkin, uh, master of uh, this sort of thing, and yeah, this is a, a fantastic movie. I can't, I can't really. I mean, I have a coworker who doesn't like this movie. I don't really know why. You know what? I don't know why he doesn't like this movie. I really fucking like this movie a lot. Who, who, so you said a coworker said yeah. he didn't like this movie? Yeah, he didn't like this movie. But we don't always agree. <laughs> no, That's very nice, very evil. I feel like this was a very good movie, and I was very entertained. It made the lots of the money, so that I can make it very, very well. It is very good. We uh, are doing good things all the time, watching good movies. I look at this movie. It's a very good movie. I, I'm not quite sure who you're ever who you're making fun of there, but uh, uh last night on uh, AEW wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and the main event, and two matches happened last night, and I know this has nothing to do with the movie, but you disappeared forever, so um, this is what I was looking at mm-hmm. um, via the internet because there's nobody viewing either. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I literally uh, went back. Last night, my favorite pro wrestler is now signed with AEW, and it was really funny how they introduced him. Mm-hmm. There's two guys wrestling. It's like a... The best way, no disqualification match, you know, where they got chairs and ladders and stuff. And they, the guy pulls a chair from underneath the ring and attached to it was Dan Hazen. Dan Hazen, my favorite macabre pro wrestler, oh, okay, gotcha. is now with AEW <laughs> Pro Wrestling, which I've been try, I've been hoping he signed with them a while back, but he did, but I didn't know. And so all day long, I've been watching everything Dan Hazen. I was originally going to wear a Dan Hazen shirt tonight, but then I was going to, I want to save it for uh, my wrestling event I'm doing on Saturday at my house. <laughs> so, like. Okay. All right, man. Well, uh, the, yeah. all right, back to the being the Ricardos, and you can cut all that out. All right, <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. All right. So, being the Ricardos, uh, I got some quotes here. Let's, let's go over it. Let's do quotes. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Lucille Ball is a communist. Is she talking to me? Is she talking to me? Uh, so she can see me, right? <laughs> Are you drunk? Is it 10 a.m.? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I am Lucille Ball. When I'm funny, you will know it. I'm hazing you a little, which is my way of saying I have no confidence in you at all. <laughs> Why did you come to Hollywood? Because I got kicked out of New York? I can't spend the afternoon with three women and tell the truth. <laughs> there's, only one, there's only one choice for me. And she has a powerful right hook. Oh, shit. Someone could point a god. Could so someone should point a god can camera at this. And that was even why I married him. <laughs> I got good news for you. The less you talk, the more you hear. I know why you like drinking. I didn't get it. Until about two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you say you have good news, it means good news for you and bad news for me. Something dies inside of a man the first time someone calls him old. I agree with that one. <laughs> I agree with that one. <laughs> I did too. I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's not okay to get better than this. And then... Last but not least. Are you clearing your throat with this one? Yeah. 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 Lucy, I'm home. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I want you to score on this first. This is I give him a score on Brazen first. Uh, four point three, man. I I'm love you. this. I'm movie. with you, man. I'm with you. Yeah. Um. You know what? Fuck it. Four point five. I fucking love this movie. I love this movie. This was like, like one, like if I, if I, if we, this was even last year and I had to put it in that top 10 that we did, and this would be in my top 10 easily. It's going to be very hard to top this movie because not only was this movie a surprise to me, mm -hmm. you know, I was uh, one again, it was on fucking Amazon. It wasn't at the theater. I mean, we both made our names ricardo today <laughs> which is weird but um uh also it's just like damn dude what the fuck yeah, this was just like this, this movie was just it made me so happy and good and sad and like when the down parts were down i was down when the up parts were up i was up yeah there's not one part of this movie that i can be like man that was bad i mean I can be a bitch and be like, <laughs> this all didn't happen in one week, even though that's what the writer wrote. Yeah. It all happened about, I think it was between 11 months yeah. when all this actual stuff happened. Yeah. And, um, and they all try to squeeze it into, you know, one week, which was cool. I thought, because it made it more dramatic. It made it more, you know, I mean, it's just like in Bohemian Rhapsody when Freddie Mercury said he has AIDS right before Live Aid. You know, that's not what happened. Okay. I mean, I, I know that Aaron's organization is this um, thing where it comes to being like sort of untruthful or not being quite as, uh, as it happened. But man, I can't, I really couldn't get enough of this movie, honestly. <laughs> like, like I, Yeah, yeah. This movie could have been two more hours. And I would have loved every. This movie could have been a fucking mini series <laughs> where each Dude. day was an hour <laughs> long. Yeah, I it was an hour long, and, and they made it like seven, seven or five hours or whatever. I would have been all about this. This was great. This was amazing. Um, I hope every single fucking person in this movie wins an award. Even how here? Yeah, because he was good. He was good. He, he, didn't, good. he didn't look like, he doesn't look like Desi, but he fucking, like, he was I, felt like he, I felt like he was a very charismatic, oh, man, I love that guy, but I know he's a fucking scumbag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. So, uh, yeah, um, now 
we are on Rotten Tomatoes. What do you think the audience gave this movie? Mm, 93%. 75%, man. What the fuck, you fucking audience member? They have, fuck, they have you audience. Fuck, you fucking fuck. Ah! Anyway. Hey, here's what it says about the audience. Here's what audience says. Yeah, like, okay. Um, it probably means most of the viewers who grew up watching I Love Lucy, but being there, Carl is a well-made, entertaining biopic. I, I liked it, man. I, I wouldn't grow up watching it. I like this movie though a lot, a lot. Yeah, I, I love. I, I used to watch I Love Lucy all the time. I, I've probably seen every episode yeah. like at least four or five times in my life. All right, um, now the Creek score. <laughs> Man, after that score, it just like really saddens me, and I just don't know how to do this. 88%. 68%. What the fuck are you fucking guys fucking think? I want to be in a wrestling match with the freaking consumers, with the freaking critics. I want to take you on WrestleMania (laughs) coming up this April in Dallas. Music also versus all the other critics. Um, uh, Critics and is... Being the Ricardos can't hope to truly capture the subject's brilliant star power, but Nicole Kidman has a ball with Aaron Sorkin's Spitfire dialogue. Uh, I like to more than that. I like to more than that. I don't give a shit, man. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, I think they knocked it out of the park. Critics are just being critics, and uh, they can all eat my dick. I, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, it's it's... It's a good movie. Um, it's on Run to Miz, Amazon. Go if you have an Amazon. Not only okay, okay. Bottom line is this: this is not only a good movie. I would rewatch it right now if I was in a room and someone said, "I haven't seen this movie. What do you think of this movie?" Dude, I fucking like, put it movie. on right now. Push play. <laughs> yeah, push play. Push play. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down for it. This is my my thing when I review a movie, and and I've said this in the past, is that how rewatchable is this? Yeah. How can I see this, like, can I watch this, like, next week? Can I watch this next month? Does it take a whole year to rewatch this? Mm -hmm. And this one is, like, I would watch this now. Because I think it's so good, man, just watching it. Yeah, and as soon as I got done with watching it, if someone else walked in the room and said, hey, i never seen that movie, I'd be like, all right, cool, let's replay it. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. This is good and that's where I, I that's why me and the critics don't get along on shit like that is because I really think the rewatchable part has to be part of the examination. Unless it's one of those drama fucking crazy movies like uh you know, like Requiem for a Dream, where at the end of it all you feel like is committing suicide. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is it's a yeah, it's 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 a gym. And I don't know why it's why the critics don't like it as much as we did, but you know what? We're we're I don't know. We we like this movie a lot. So I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. All right. I think that's it, man. I next think next week we're so watching. We we're doing movies, next, week, news, but... next week you're doing um Kingsman and Munich: The Edge of War. Yes, we're doing European movies. Yeah. Uh, or European-based movies, I guess. Then after that, we'll begin to the theater. I think that there's a few things coming out at the beginning of the February that we can't wait to see. When does Jackass come out, man? Oh, it comes Is out, that on the 4th? Yeah, it comes on the 4th. I think the Jackass t- comes out. Oh, man, I can't wait to do a but, Jackass review. Uh, yeah, well, that'll be a quick one, though. We don't want to give anything away, and it's hard not to give anything away about this. Uh, I, I, Yeah, but you're talking to a guy who used to own the CKY. All right, man. Like video no, I'm definitely gonna Jack see it. Well, I also want to see and Moonfall. So, can't kill yourself. All right, man. Can't kill yourself. Can't kill yourself. Can't kill yourself. Right, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but yeah, next week will be Munich Edge of War and the Kingsman. Uh, something I saw already, but Neil he got COVID that week, so <laughs> we can see it. But um, I, I died that week and I couldn't go to the movie theater. But we'll, but we'll talk about it. Um. You can visit online movies on stuff.net. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash movies on stuff podcast. We're on Twitter at NGS podcast. We're on the Instagram at NGS podcast. If you want to buy shirts with, a, with us on it, go to bonfire.com slash movies on stuff and something to do. If you guys want to get some money and get some stickers and some other stuff and exclusive shirt, go to patreon.com slash movies on stuff. 
On all stream platforms where you find podcasts, you can find movies on Suckers and the Dew. What do you do for small businesses, pal? Small businesses. If you got a small business <laughs> and you want to sit there and you want to get an advertised by us, let us know. You can just give us your info and we'll be more than happy to sit here and do everything and promote you with our thousands of listeners, our hundreds of followers, our millions of people that love us around the world. Just let us know by DMing us or emailing us. <laughs> I didn't know we had Jar Jar Binks do a guest on the show. Was that Jar Jar Binks? I kind think of. that wasn't Jar Jar Binks. Kind of Jar Jar Binks? Kind of Jar Jar, okay. yeah. Why don't we be like, um, let me try a different voice. Let's go like, hey. Hi, let's have a good podcast. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's another episode of Movies That Suck and Suck New. My name's Neil. I'm Chris. And remember, no matter how hard you try, being brazen in the rib category doesn't mean anything as long as you can be rich like the Ricardos. Have a good night. <laughs>